interior design and just the way people lay out furniture in their own house or apartment is kind of an art form in itself. But there are a few things that are usually always the same. One of those being is typically when you have a bed, it is going to be straight against the wall. When you have a couch, it is going to be probably parallel with a wall or perpendicular to a wall. It is never going to be at a really weird angle. So when you have things in a room, you're not going to have things angled just five degrees off a wall and then 10 degrees off a wall, right? We have that little bit of OCD usually. Okay, it'll be a few degrees off, you know, it's natural, but it will not be just randomly rotated by 30 degrees compared to the wall next to it. And we also want to kind of replicate this in Unreal. Now, normally you get something like this where you have things that are rotated in every single way. Because here we're using a simple transform points and we're just randomly rotating within 360 degrees. You cannot increment this in let's say 90 degree angles. I'm also scaling it between negative one and one. Why? I want it to be either flipped one way or the other way to give a little more variation. But of course, when you do this, you get something like this where you have randomly rotated everything. Things are scaled, small, large. It is, it is crazy and it is not realistic to how an actual furniture layout would be in an apartment or house. Today, I'm going to show you how to create a custom node, which will allow us to increment in 45 degree angles, 90 degree angles, with any kind of setup you want, and the ability to flip in one axis or multiple axes randomly. So let's get to it. And for this tutorial, I'm assuming that you have already some points generated that you want to now incremental transform. So in my case, I'm using a regular spline with a closed loop and a PCG graph with a PCG graph just being the spline data that's sampling the interior and then printing half the points roundly rotating them in this case 360 degrees between negative one and one and then it is just cleaning off any overlapping points and then spawning our mesh. It's a very basic setup. We're going to get started on actually getting the incremental transform going. So to do that, grab yourself an execute blueprint and just drag it out and then select any one of these. It doesn't matter. And just click browse to asset. And then you can delete the node. All we're doing is opening this location. If you're in the deprecated folder, just go up to BP elements. You want to get set point color and duplicate that. And that is going to be our incremental transform. So go ahead and create it and then go ahead and move it into your folder. Once you have it there, go ahead and open it and we can get started on actual node in here. So open up the point loop body and we're going to delete the linear color. We don't need that. And we can delete the linear color variable. Then go to note title override. And this is the name that appears when you drag it in. So I'm going to call it incremental transform. And in the class defaults, I'm going to change the category from color to custom. Now for the execute with context, the actual graph, we can leave it all as is. We don't need to touch anything here because we're just using every the point loop and everything's going to happen inside of it. Let's go to our point loop body. We're going to remove the color here and we're going to enable transform. And then we can get started right in between here. So I'll split the transform right away and I'll split the rotation and the scale because we're going to need access to all of this. And then I'm going to scoosh it over to the right. And then we're going to get our endpoint and we're going to break it. And we're going to split the transform and the rotation and the scale, just like we did on the right. So all of our stuff is going to go right in between here. Now the location, it, we're going to maintain the location. We're not changing location at all, but we do want to change the rotation and the scale. So instead of doing this three times in here, we can actually use a function. Now, prior to this, I thought functions didn't work in PCG, but thanks to you guys in the comments below, as well as on the discord, you let me know that there is a way of getting functions to actually operate inside of PCG. So let's make a new function. And this is going to be our rotational increment. I'm going to set this variable to be fewer and under advanced here, if you don't have it, just open it up. You want to make it a constant. Now I've never used these options here. And for some reason, having it to be a constant function ends up actually working correctly. From my understanding, a function is always constant because it is, that is the function. It the function doesn't change, but clearly something under the hood is different. Some of you guys that are far smarter than me probably could figure it out and explain it better than I can. <laughs> Once you have that, you can go ahead and select it and have three inputs. We're going to need one Boolean and two floats. The Boolean is just going to be a matter of enabling the rotation. And the floats, the first one, we can go ahead and grab the original rotation. And we're also going to need incremental rotation. Now, this is the amount that is going to be rotated by. 
So this is, let's say, 45 degrees. You put it in here, 90 degrees, put it in here. So now we have that. Let's grab our incremental rotation and grab ourselves a divide node. But we want to actually divide it by this number. So I'm going to plug it into the second input and type 360 into the first. So this is going to get us how many times is it going to fit inside of 360 degrees. So if it's 90, it's going to fit four times. Or technically five, because it's going to fit once for zero and once for 360, as you'll soon see. So we want to, from here, grab a random integer in range. Now, it's going to go from zero to the maximum. Now, we can plug this in directly. This will get us the both zero and the 360 version. We don't really want that. So what we're going to do is subtract one here. And by subtracting one, that means it is only going to use the zero version, not the zero and 360 version. So from here, we want to grab our incremental rotation, and we want to multiply by this value. If it was, let's say, 90 degrees and I picked two, it's not going to be at 180 degrees. So, and this, since this runs on every single point individually, it'll put a different rotation on every single point. But we only want to do this when the enable rotation is set to true. So I'm going to get enable rotation, and we want to make sure that this is true. So I'm going to drag out of here and do select float, and this can go into A, and the original rotation can go to B. Now, this isn't quite right, because if enable rotation is true, if you have zero for your incremental rotation, well, you're taking 360 and divided by zero. And we know in math, do not divide by zero. So the easy solution to this is to get the incremental rotation and check if it is greater than zero. And assuming that it's greater than zero and the enable rotation is actually turned on, then we can go ahead and use the functions that we just created. If not, just return the original rotation. And that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and just drag out a return node at the end and plug in our selected float output into the return node. And that's all we need to do here. I'll go compile and open up our point loop body and I can drag this in. Now we're gonna need three of these, one for every single one of the axes that up here. And I'll plug these into the X, Y, Z of the transform. And we're gonna plug in the original transforms into the X, Y, Z here. Now we're gonna need three bools and three variables for these incremental rotations. Let's make a new variable. This is gonna be X rotation, it's gonna be bool, it's gonna be exposed. And then I'll just go ahead and duplicate them and just rename them to Y rotation and Z rotation. And then I'm gonna grab myself three new variables. This is gonna be X increment rotation. This is going to be a float and it's going to be exposed. And I'm gonna make it so the slider and value minimums are zero, so it never goes into the negatives. And then I'm gonna duplicate them and make a Y and Z version as well. I'm also just gonna reorder this for convenience. And once you're all ready, just plug these in into the variables that we have created, bulls into the bulls, and the floats into the floats. Once everything's plugged in, you're pretty much all done with the rotations. Now, if you guys are enjoying the content so far, I would appreciate if you hit the like button. It means a lot to me. And while you're down there, if you're new, consider subscribing for more awesome tutorials like this. Get back to it. For the scale, let's make a new function. And we're just gonna call this invert scale, because this is just going to invert the scale if we need it to. And just like before, make it a pure function and a constant. Go ahead and add two variables into the input. The first one's gonna be a Boolean, and this is going to be enable invert. And the second one is going to be original scale, because we need to know what the original scale is that we're getting. So grabbing our original scale, we're going to multiply it by negative one, to get the invert of it. And then we want to right click and get ourselves a select node. So the select option zero will be the original and the option one will be negative one. Now, it doesn't matter which one you put into where, you can completely reverse these because what we're going to do is get ourselves a random integer as an NTB in range and just say the maximum is two because the random integer just goes between zero and max minus one and max minus one is one. In this case, it's going to go between zero and one. Go ahead and plug that into the index. And we also want to make sure that it only happens when you enable invert again. So get enable invert and we want to do a select float. And if it's true, Go ahead and use this information. If it's not true, get the original scale and use that instead. And then go ahead and just return everything. A very simple setup. And now in the point loop body, we can go ahead and just drag out three of these guys, just like we did for the rotation. And just like in the rotation, plug in the X, Y, and Z into the transform here and get the original X, Y, Z from the transforms. But of course, we now need a new variable for this. So I'll make three new bools. It's gonna be our X random invert. It's also gonna be exposed and a Boolean. And then I'm gonna duplicate it and set it up for Y and Z as well. Once it's all good, go ahead and plug these in. Just make sure you're always consistent in the X, Y, and Z. And that's pretty much all there is to it.
Now, as always, the project files for this are available on the Patreon, where you can join these lovely people here in supporting what I do. It really means a lot. And if you'd like to chat with us, have any questions, you can always join the Discord, which is always linked in the description down below. Thank you so much again. Let's get back to it. Now, this is graph is all done. Let's go to our PCG graph. And for our transform points, I'm just going to reuse this, and I'm going to change the rotation minimum to be minus 5 and 5. So there's a subtle variation. And I'm going to keep this scale to be one to one. We don't actually want to change the scale here. Let's go detach this. And before this transform, I'm going to drag in our incremental transform node. I'm going to plug that in here. And now for its settings, I want to rotate on the Z axis with a 90 degree increments. So it aligns to the walls. And actually, let's go ahead and randomly invert the X and the Y, but not the Z because Z would be upside down. And now if you see here, these are now all randomly rotated within 90 degrees. So now you're having lots of new variations. And of course, if I want to, I can go in here and set 45 degree angles. And this is a lot more easily to be seen where you have some of them going straight, some of them going sideways, facing top left, facing top right, right? And you have these variations now in the increments that you want. But with this, you can now take this anywhere you want and you can have full control over how big of a change you want something to be. Realmies flip things around because you don't need to just rotate it. You can just use the scale part or just the rotation part as you see fit. But now that you have your interiors, if you want to know how to create the walls and the rooms to generate them in, check out this video right here to see how we generate rooms that you can actually split out using PCG.